The National Defence Authorization Act, or NDAA, is a routine piece of legislation in the United States which presidents pass every year to OK the budget for the Defence Department. But this year's version of the Act, just signed into law by President Obama, is causing concern among civil liberties groups. They say it contains provisions which could lead to the indefinite detention of US citizens. Jonathan Turley is Professor of Law at George Washington University. What is alarming is the sweeping unchecked authority that it gives the president. Part of the concern with the NDAA is it's only the latest in a series of rollbacks of individual rights in the United States since September 11th. Just recently, President Obama claimed the authority to kill a U.S. citizen anywhere in the world at any time if he believes the citizen is a national security threat. He has now claimed the right to indefinitely detain citizens. But he's actually said, hasn't he, I want to clarify that my administration will not authorise the indefinite military detention without trial of American citizens. The complete opposite of that. Well, it's a, it's a rather hollow promise when you just signed that power into law. There's whatever his intentions may be. He was just given an authoritarian power. And what defines an authoritarian government is not necessarily the use of those powers, but the ability to use those powers. Most Americans never thought there would come a day when their rights of due process, and even life itself, is left to the discretion of a single person, the United States President. And while people may trust President Obama, they may not be quite as, as comfortable with the next president. But one of the most chilling aspects of the post 9-11 period uh, is that many citizens are comfortable with signing over so many of their rights to the government. Uh, President Obama has accumulated a shocking array of national security powers, from warrantless surveillance to secret courts to secret evidence to even the assassination of U.S. citizens. And quite frankly, for many citizens, the response has been a collective yawn. Well, you've described this as one of the greatest rollbacks of civil liberties in the history of the United States. Why is it, in your analysis, that you think President Obama is keen to amass all these authoritarian powers? The reason is that I think he made a rather cynical calculation when he came into office, uh, that civil libertarians have nowhere to go, and that he decided to tack to the right on terrorism, to appeal to more conservative voters. But, but you're surely not saying that civil libertarians in the United States are hankering back to the days of George W. Bush now? No, but I think civil libertarians uh, are not prepared to support President Obama. And part of the reason is not just this latest indefinite detention, but a whole series of rollbacks. But I think that there's a much more important thing here than the political ramifications. I mean, the United States is changing. At what point do we have to redefine the type of government we have when a president holds such unchecked and unilateral power? That's Professor Jonathan Turley from George Washington University. Is the use of lethal...